that we might consider more contentious aspects of democratic innovation. So I'll give you a classic example. The human rights cluster is increasingly dealing with cases of human rights violation. Uh, the democratic accountability cluster, I imagine, will be dealing with cases of corruption. And so this leads us uh, towards uncharted territory, uh, where we're now beginning to deal with cases and methods that are a little bit contentious. So we thought we needed to come up with uh, a set of policy guidelines and mission statements that broadly defines what our goals are and what our principles are. And you can see this on our website, but I want to draw your attention to a particular part of the policy statement that I think captures some of the concerns that have been raised and how we hope to address them. Uh, it says that although committed to democratic ideals, Participedia does not advance any ideological, programmatic, institutional, or governance agenda. We believe that there are many ways to advance democracy and that they will differ by place, history, culture, context, and context-based challenges. We recognize existing inequalities in the collection, theorization, mobilization of knowledge, about non-Western forms of democratic innovations. Participedia is committed to addressing this imbalance. We also recognize that not all cases and methods documented by Participedia will improve democracy and that impact will vary by context. And I have to thank Mark here who really took the lead uh, in drafting this. Um, and, and I think this captures the essence of what we want to do, but it's work in progress. And we welcome comments and uh, suggestions on how we can refine uh, this mission statement uh, that, that hopefully uh, captures our values as a community and uh, as a network. All right, so community agreements. So in, just like we now have a mission statement, we also have community agreements. Again, these are basic common sense principles that we have outlined to guide how we do business, how we interact with the community and how we interact with each other. And they're very, very basic values that I believe uh, we all share, uh, founded on respect, uh, inclusion, and uh, creating a space where we can uh, all have constructive uh, um, research uh, dialogues. I always say that for a project that aspires to study participation and democratic innovation, we should ourselves reflect those principles in how we organize our project. In other words, we should practice what we preach. So in some ways, this is about bringing those same values of inclusion, of deliberation and participation that we are committed to studying into how we organize our project. Uh, one of the key things we've developed uh, in phase one is the Participedia internal site. So this is the one-stop shop uh, where we keep all Participedia related information. I know many of you are familiar with that, but this has been incredibly, incredibly helpful uh, for all Participedia documents. Uh, you can find them here. It's become like a, a working repository of our Participedia uh, documents. And I encourage uh, team members to use this as a resource. Just to give you an example of the value of this platform for the project, uh, we recently had a conversation about ethics approval. So some team members are doing the kind of a human subject research that requires ethics approval. And so what we've done is that we've uh, provided sample of Participedia ethics protocol and approvals, uh, applications on this platform that you can use if you're thinking of human subject research related to Participedia. There are many other resources on this internal site that will be useful to clusters and individual researchers as we progress with this uh, project. The clusters are making great progress. Uh, I'm glad to see 
uh, the cluster leads here, many of them are here, uh, but also uh, the student ARIs that are uh, supporting uh, these various clusters. Like I said a moment ago, Participedia runs on the power of students. And I'm grateful to the students who really uh, brought the, the cluster uh, to, to together. Uh, one of the challenges of the cluster model of organizing research is the risk of siloing. And everybody knows that uh, the, the, the research cluster model works uh, in the sense that it allows for small closely knit groups of researchers to work on particular themes. But there's the ever present challenge of building coherence in a project. And going into Participedia phase two, that was one of our main concern uh, that the cluster model doesn't devolve into siloed uh, closed uh, clusters. But I'm glad to report that one year on, we haven't seen that. Uh, clusters are doing their work, uh, research is progressing, but somehow the ARIs have worked to bring coherence to the project and uh, platforms like this, uh, our all partners meetings provide an opportunity for us to learn what's happening in other clusters, have inter-cluster dialogues. And so in some ways, we are really doing what we had planned to do from the beginning, have clusters focus on particular themes, but also building uh, that coherence around the project that allows us to work together as a team. And we have progressed along the lines of what we planned in the co-design process. And I have to thank Jesse, uh, our design team lead for really uh, drafting these and, and conceptualizing how we will progress uh, with this. So we've had uh, the discover phase of the project, uh, the define phase of the project, uh, the develop phase of the project, and the deliver phase of the project. And all those were designed, defined by cluster workshops in which many of you participated uh, with, with very tangible outcomes. Uh, we are now at the Partners uh, Conference uh, where we're taking stock of what we've achieved and hopefully that leads us to year uh, two where we begin a new phase of the co-design uh, uh, process. Uh, just to remind uh, team members, the way we have designed Participedia phase two is that for years one and year two, we really believe that we're building the project. And so the funding model is such that uh, funding devolves to every co-investigator in the project. Uh, but for years three, four, and five, we expect that clusters will become a little bit more defined in what they want to pursue. Uh, there is more certainty in the directions each cluster wants to go with their project. And so funding, would really be defined by the executive committee made up of the cluster chairs who will decide uh, where the funding goes. So it's really important for us in year one, years one and year two to begin to coalesce our thoughts uh, within clusters and, and have a better sense of what we want to do uh, moving forward, particularly in years three, uh, four and five. But like I always say, the Participedia model uh, encourages collaborative work. After all, we are a knowledge mobilization project. It's a partnership grant. Uh, but we also recognize uh, that individual researchers may want to do their own work. And there's space for that in Participedia. Uh, but what I encourage individuals who are thinking about doing their own work is to communicate with cluster chairs, uh, make that known, uh, so that we know where each researcher, collaborator, co-investigator sits within the project as we begin to think about year two and the years after that. So some updates. So the principal uh, product of the Participedia network is participedia.net, a longstanding platform where we collate these cases, methods, and organizations about democratic innovations. Since phase, since the beginning of phase two, we've made significant changes to that platform. A special shout out to our lead developer, Pam, 
uh, who's really worked hard with Jesse uh, to make these advancements. And these advancements we've made on the platform have come about through deliberation at the executive committee, uh, where Jesse and Pam have provided us with options and we have collectively decided what to prioritize to enhance uh, the platform. And, and many of these tweaks and changes that we've made have really come out of user feedback. Uh, so just to give you an example, uh, reviewed entries. Uh, that is a long-standing debate we've had within uh, Participedia. As Participedia expands and Participedia resources are increasingly used and cited in publications and books and journal articles, uh, we thought it might be helpful uh, okay. We thought it might be helpful to have uh, a reviews a review system where we identify certain cases as haven't been reviewed by an editorial board, and you know, kind of give it some form of uh, I wouldn't say legitimacy now, but some kind of um, a, a approval, you know, within the Participedia theme. And and these are if I, you know if I were thinking of myself as a researcher. Are trying to cite Participedia cases, for instance, I want a case that is relatively stable, a case that is uh, uh, that has been reviewed, and I have the option now of going to Participedia and seeking out reviewed cases to use uh, in, in from the website. I'm told I have just a few minutes more, so I'll be quick with that. Connected with the reviewed cases is the editorial board. So if cases are going to be reviewed, the natural question is who does the review? So we're thinking now of an editorial board. I believe one has been constituted. I tried to finalize this summer. And the point here is not really to review everything on Participedia. We have 3,000 plus cases. That would be impossible. It is to review a few uh, cases that could stand out uh, for use by those who are looking for uh, materials that are more permanent that can be used, uh, cited in academic uh, articles. Uh, journals or books. And so what we've done is that if you see some cases, we'll have the green check mark. And that simply says they've been reviewed. And I also believe those cases are then locked um, for some time. I don't know if it's permanently, but they're locked. So there's some permanence to those cases uh, for some time. Uh, teaching cafes, the teaching and um, learning and mentoring team under the able leadership of Bettina have been doing an awesome job. Uh, you know, organizing these teaching cafes uh, that have been very well attended. The last one was actually led by students. And so I encourage uh, team members uh, who are thinking of using a Participedia in the classroom uh, to connect with the learning team and attend these teaching cafes that have been very useful. I just made a presentation to our faculty here at McMaster, uh, to the Dean's Advisory Council, uh, exploring with them the possibilities of using Participedia more widely uh, in courses and classroom across the university. Uh, we're also thinking about a summer school uh, project in partnership with uh, SFU and uh, Emily Carr University. Uh, we have planned for about two or three summer schools for the duration of the Participedia project. Uh, summer schools were, were done in the first phase of the project, I think at Montreal a very successful summer school program there. And we're hoping to replicate uh, that with the next summer school. We still have space for two more summer schools. And so if there's any partner who's uh, willing, able and ready to initiate a summer school project uh, in your institutions, we'll be happy to have that uh, conversation. Uh, and this is the one that gets me really excited. You know, the great work that the students are doing with podcasts and you know, social media, uh, we have two great podcasts that's, that's, uh, that are already on. I just listened again to the first edition of Just Participation, a student-led podcast. Wonderful, wonderful resource. And they want ideas. They want your support. They're wrong with it. Believe me, these students are creative. Uh, so please, if you have any ideas, anyone they should be talking to, uh, there are actually two podcasts. There's People of Participedia. These are people-centered podcasts where students interview uh, members of the Participedia team. So please, if they reach out to you, say yes. Uh, let's encourage them. And I can tell you, I did one of this. It's a very interactive and rewarding experience. Uh, we want to do more people 
of Participedia, uh, but there's also the Just Participation podcast centered around themes and topics. So if you have suggestions of, of what they should be focusing on, uh, uh, there is, uh, what's the name of the bar? I keep forgetting, I know there's bar, the menu bar. Genius bar, okay, all right, good thing. I knew there was a bar, you know, I wasn't sure. <laughs> it had to do with a bar. So that's, that's the genius bar upstairs, so it's the hub where they do all this wonderful, you know, podcast and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram stuff. Please, please drop by and I'm sure you, they'll, they'll, they'll make you do something. I'll just say yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that's it, the genius bar. So they, 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 you can ask about the Just Participation podcast, uh, uh, design technology team, and, and the video series. Um, so yeah, and particularly for those of uh, our colleagues who are joining online, uh, please don't feel left out. Um, you, you, you can also reach out to uh, Jesse and her team uh, for any of these initiatives and see how you can participate. And finally, 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 I want once again to say a big shout out to our wonderful and incredible research assistants. You know, Participedia runs on the power of students. Uh, students are is. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for the great work you do. Uh, we look forward to another year of student engagement, uh, collaborations, and very productive outcomes. Thank you very much. Well, hello everyone. Uh, just so nice to see everybody in person. If I seem a little rusty, it might be because this is the uh, first conference presentation two and a half years uh, uh, outside of Zoom, and of course, uh, teaching. Uh, we, I, I do wanna say once again that, um, you know, we're often down in the weeds in, in what we're doing. Uh, the uh, big, normative goal of our project is to uh, keep pushing democracy and democratization forward. And uh, the normative importance of this is that we are making little bits of difference, we hope, in the uh, kind of well-being, dignity, and uh, sort of self-government, self-development of, of people, their communities, uh, the collectivities that support them, and so on. Uh, now, as you may or may not know, uh, Matt Ryan and I uh, comprise the uh, research committee um, of <clears throat> uh, Participedia phase two, uh, because the research structure of Participedia is decentralized into research clusters, unlike phase one, which was fairly uh, centralized. The, the idea of the research committee is that we're uh, helping to coordinate uh, common research tasks of um, phase two and uh, uh, facilitate as we go forward uh, common research questions across uh, clusters uh, so that they uh, don't become siloed. Uh, we're uh, on the, the lookout for um, uh, uh, interesting projects that uh, come out of Participedia uh, that are, are beyond our networks. Uh, there are, are more and more of these uh, about which I'll uh, say, say something more at the end. Uh, our, Kind of uh, immediate and uh, most uh, urgent task, though, is uh, to get our uh, new data models uh, underway. Uh, by data models, uh, uh, we simply mean the uh, the sets of questions that are asked, kind of underneath that front face of each case or each method in Participedia. Uh, all the questions that uh, allow us to. Uh, uh, map uh, the kinds of, of um, uh, democratic innovations uh, that we're interested in in uh, fairly fine-grained ways. Uh, so um, <clears throat> uh, this is a fairly big challenge. Uh, it took uh, uh, many, many drafts to get the, the research, uh, I'm sorry, the data model for, um, for participatory governance, which was our kind of place we began. Uh, 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 finessed, uh, working, and, and then built uh, into the website. Uh, we are falling behind a little bit in our uh, ambitions to get the, uh, the new uh, area emphases uh, built into the website, uh, but we'll get there. Um, <clears throat> 
the uh, some of you may not be uh, entirely clear about uh, how we get there and what responsibilities the clusters uh, have for this. And so I, I want to just say a few uh, words about this. Uh, actually, many of you will know that the way this works is that we uh, theorize uh, um, uh, questions that are appropriate to the um, research clusters, given rights or, or democratic accountability. Uh, we need to then refine those questions into uh, things that can look like the data model questions that are in the current website. Uh, some of them are very basic, like you know, when and where and what and, and these sorts of things. Uh, others have to do with the kinds of processes. Uh, you know, was it in our in our current data data model? Is it you know? Is it facilitated? Is it online? Is it face to face? Uh, what are the methods that are used, uh, and so on and so forth? Um, now, uh, we need to do uh, something like this for each of the new clusters. Uh, the um, way we need to do this is to work off of the um, uh, the Excel spreadsheet that uh, coders. Uh, are, have used and continue to use to uh, actually code these questions uh, into the website. Uh, and the way that uh, this will work is uh, if you work off of that spreadsheet, spreadsheet, you can then flag the questions that aren't, um, th that no longer work, right? Uh, so if you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, I don't know, uh, democratic accountability and, um, and the mechanisms through which this works, uh, maybe face-to-face -face facilitation isn't an appropriate thing to ask uh, about, uh, about this uh, topic. Um, so, uh, and then uh, in terms of the way this gets coded into the website, uh, uh, we're not building um, five new data models uh, alongside of one another, but rather uh, having one data model where, uh, uh, if you check, you know, if this is about democratic representation, that then may close off certain questions that are not relevant to this, but would have been relevant to participatory governance, and then may open up a new uh, uh, drop down menu uh, that will be relevant to, say, democratic representation. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that we're, we're trying to, to produce. Um, it's uh, uh, going to take time. Uh, uh, Jesse can probably tell you that it took uh, actually a couple of years to get to the uh, fairly refined uh, data model that we have for participatory governance. Uh, we uh, uh, want to get to the kind of first drafts of the uh, broad, the, the newly expanded data model, uh, probably over the next uh, month or two months or something like that. Um, <clears throat> Right. I'm not keeping my slides up here. Uh, this is just a summary of uh, what I was saying here. Uh, you can see that I'm rusty. So uh, another thing we, we do want to do is we want to uh, identify uh, questions that are common across the, the new clusters. Uh, you'll know from, um, from thinking about the clusters that they uh, often overlap with one another. Um, this is, um, uh, I wouldn't say it's by design, but it's not accidental. Uh, we have, you know, for example, one uh, cluster that focuses on uh, uh, digital media, uh, digital democracy, these sorts of things. Of course, that's a kind of process definition of a cluster. Uh, in contrast to the clusters that are um, uh, uh, powered by uh, substantive normative issues, say human rights. And so just because the clusters are not defined in uh, precisely exclusive and parallel uh, ways, there are uh, uh, issues that are going to span uh, these clusters. Uh, we're not uh, there yet, but uh, as we move to uh, 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 a more refined expanded data model, we're also going to be looking out for uh, questions that are common uh, across clusters. Uh, we're going, I'm going to ask you, and you will be doing this anyway, but uh, as we um, hear from the clusters tomorrow, 
uh, we will want to be uh, taking notes on the questions, say, in one cluster that work for another cluster. And these are the sorts of things that can then be built into common questions uh, within uh, the data model. Uh, but also, uh, it'll generate uh, kind of substantive research synergies uh, across, uh, you know, what we're calling uh, the kind of signature uh, research projects. Um, <clears throat> And then finally, just a, a few research updates. We're trying to keep our eyes out for, um, for projects that are uh, um, uh, common across uh, Participedia, but uh, maybe uh, a little bit interesting and, and surprising. And I'm just, I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples. Uh, Francesco uh, Vary, who's a postdoc, a Swiss postdoc at the University of Canberra, just published an article uh, called Mapping Democratic Innovations, a Bottom-Up Empirical Perspective. Uh, what he does is he uses an inductive approach uh, as opposed to a kind of deductive approach to uh, classify democratic innovations. And uh, what he, he's working off of the methods parts of Participedia, uh, carved, he's taken about half of the methods as uh, um, uh, double ups, not, uh, not fully unique and then done factor analysis to see what, uh, whether these methods fall into clusters. And um, uh, what he finds is that, uh, of course, you know, there aren't really uh, you know, 146 uh, uh, unique methods in participatory governance, but rather there are clusters of techniques that get branded with different kinds of names. The reason you can do this, and, and part of the reason I'm emphasizing this is that the Participedia data model uh, focuses on very generic um, uh, features of participatory governance, right? Like facilitation or like uh, self-selection versus random selection and so on. And so it was generating the kind of data that allowed them to do this uh, inductive approach to, uh, to clustering forms of, 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 uh, of participatory uh, democratic innovations. Uh, Participedia has been used by a large uh, EU 2020 Horizons grant, um, sort of a 3 million euro project or something like that. Uh, uh, the, the group is using Participedia to map all of the cases of uh, uh, blurred of many publics in, in Europe. Uh, this is as close as we've come to something that looks uh, like a census. So one of the things that one of the research problems of, of Participedia is that um, we have a lot of great cases, but people like to pull out the cases that are working, they ignore the ones that don't, uh, and it's very selective. We don't know about the universe from which the cases are drawn, so we don't know, for example, about uh, where they are, what issues they are, what kind of density, and so on. This is as close as we've come to uh, something that looks like a, uh, a census of the universe of, of uh, deliberative mini publics in uh, uh, much of Europe, uh, which is, is quite interesting. Uh, they haven't yet kind of done uh, the analysis, but, uh, but they're using this background for a, a number of um, uh, uh, processes that they will design as part of, the, part of their uh, research uh, project. Um, we're no longer the only game in town. You know, when we started up, uh, Participedia was a kind of a unique project in uh, mapping uh, the emerging universe of, of participatory democratic innovations. Uh, the OECD has moved heavily into this space, which uh, is fabulous. Uh, the Bertelsmann Foundation has moved into this space, uh, it's both European projects. Uh, I don't know of other big organizations that are, are beginning to do this kind of thing. I expect there are others. If you know of others, uh, we'd like to know about them. Uh, there is interest in democratic innovations in a number of UN agencies. Uh, Bonnie may have a, 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 a little more to say about this, but uh, there are UN agencies that are kind of discovering democratic innovations uh, almost independently of one another since the agencies are often not talking uh, to one another. But in the process, they're also discovering uh, Participedia. But this is a, a, a great source of examples. Uh, Matt Ryan and the Southampton group 
have uh, used Participedia money to create a uh, Twitter search tool. Um, <clears throat> and part of the idea here uh, is that uh, we don't actually know very much about uh, how good or effective uh, a lot of cases of participatory governments and democratic innovations are. It's really hard to measure impact. So uh, Matt and his group have created a Twitter tool that can tell us uh, what kind of chatter there is around uh, this that democratic innovation, which gives some indication of the penetration of uh, these processes in public consciousness. Uh, so there are other things going on, but um, if you uh, do know of, of, uh, of uh, uh, uses of Participedia, uh, we would um, love to know about those and we will uh, share those and publicize them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> welcome to the space, uh, everyone who's online. <laughs> and welcome to yourselves, everyone who's in the room. <laughs> so, um, Bettina and I are, are two of the three co-chairs um, of the TTM committee, and there are uh, a number of people on this committee. So I think what I'd like to just quickly do is to have people introduce themselves. If you're on this committee, could you raise your hand? And then could you introduce yourself? Jonathan Roche from Queen's University. Uh, Sanjay Brelia from Toronto Metropolitan. Okay, so that's who's in the room. And then is there anyone online who is... Yeah, so I see uh, Paolo. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Paolo Spada from Southampton University. Who else? Who else is online from the committee? Lucy, I think. Hi, I'm Lucy Parry from the University of Canberra. This is great. Uh, and I see Joanna is online. She's been involved heavily as well. Um, and I think that leaves us to acknowledge also on this committee is um, Pierrick uh, Chalai from uh, Canberra, but I think that's, and, and then of course a third co-chair is uh, Paula Ardilis, who uh, will be around, I believe, tomorrow, either online or in person, right? Oh, oh later, this afternoon. This afternoon, yeah, yeah. okay, awesome. So um, that's, that's who's uh, on this committee, and we are a fairly fluid and, and dynamic uh, space and we are very open to uh, new ideas and new energy so keep that in mind as, as we, uh, we present a little bit of what we've been up to. Essentially the purpose, the mandate of this committee is to recognize that um, I was just noting in the in the mission statement that um, Bonnie was sharing, you know, our, our mission is essentially to mobilize knowledge about democracy and one key vector for that is this idea of, of participia serving as a global classroom in democracy. And so this, this is a committee that's shaped to kind of drive that agenda of how can we um, use our functions as educators, as teachers, as learners, um, as students, as maybe as practitioners who also do training um, as mentors uh, in different capacities to advance this mission of um, building knowledge around democracy in, in the various spaces that we operate in. And we, we do that in, in multiple ways. We've, we've heard a little bit about some of the um, initiatives and I'll invite um, Bettina maybe just to share a little bit more about what we've been up to, what's on our mind. Um, and then we'll turn it over to you to uh, come up with maybe a bit more ideas, but I think I'll stop here for now. Um, um, maybe one, so one more thing before I turn it over. I, when I say global classroom, uh, I use the term loosely because I think it's important to recognize that um, I think Participedia has aims for learning beyond just the kind of formal classroom, right? So a lot of us operate within classrooms, but within other spaces. And so the learners that we think about um, are not just uh, the students sitting in classrooms, but also multiple stakeholders who have uh, an interest in a key role in this project of democracy. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks, Julian. So I will just briefly talk about what the committee has been doing and um, some ideas about the way forward. So in the last round of Participedia, I would be, I think it's fair to say, Jesse, I'm looking at Jesse, that our work focused mainly on trying to create a repository 
of new pedagogies, of syllabi, of you know, anybody working on participatory democracy in their classrooms, whether with students or with practitioners or with um, activists. Um, and we worked hard trying to get this repository going, but it was quite difficult. We didn't have the funding, we didn't have the time. So that's still one project that is possibly, well, it's lying low actually, um, to be reinvigorated. Um, since last year, we've worked on three projects. The one is the teaching cafes that Bonnie mentioned. And here the idea really is that anybody within the network who is teaching about participatory democracy or using participedia case studies, who would like to showcase their teaching practices, pedagogies, assignments, whatever. It can be something small, it can be something big. Please volunteer and we will host a teaching cafe for you. Yeah? They're very informal, they're an hour long. You don't have to prepare much. Paolo did the first one, which was super exciting. But really, if you want to showcase what you are doing with Participedia or teaching participatory democracy, hi Paolo, <laughs> please um, contact us. The second uh, project are the, is the summer schools, but that's become a bit of a broader Participedia project. Um, the third sort of project that we're talking about and that we started a discussion with Sanjay is this idea of a global classroom. Um, I've been running um, one with Jesse's help and a university in South Africa and a university in Sweden on climate change and democracy. We've got a model for that, but we are thinking about building a Participedia global classroom, which would bring students together from all over the world um, to design proto uh, prototypes for democratic action. We're focusing at the moment on climate change with Jesse's help, but there might be other ideas. I know Sanjay had some excellent ideas. And this summer, the, the, the global classroom at the moment runs over a month um, with four two hour sessions on a Saturday so that students from all over the world can join. But that's something that we could possibly also roll out. Um, and then just to say hi, Paula, again, <laughs> um, that I think, I don't know if this is fair to say, but I was in South Africa recently and I was speaking to some democracy educators in South Africa. And they were saying that there's been a massive decline in democracy education programs. I don't know if this is, this is fair to say globally, but I think that this to me is also one of the sort of, um, what's the word? Motivations for this committee, you know? Let's, let's push and let's, let's develop democracy education through Participedia, not only for students at universities, but for practitioners. I know Sanjay is very involved and Julian, but also for activists, you know? So let's think about democracy education more broadly and use this committee and the space in Participedia to develop that. So democracy education, not only um, in universities, but more broadly, um, thinking, getting people together to think about how to, how to conceptualize democracy in the current climate and how to act for it. Paula, do you want to say something or just say hi? Or... Thank you. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a new member and uh, been having the opportunity to co-chair with these two lovely folks represented. Um, so I'm pa Paula and I'm based at the Simon Fraser University in BC, so excuse me if I'm a bit uh, jet lagged this morning, um, but uh, we, uh, I think that my, my, my hope is that uh, we get lots of student engagement as part of the work of the, um, of this group, the teaching and learning group, so we've been doing that quite actively, and I just want to thank all those who have participated and have come to our teaching cafes. And uh, we're also going to be having an exciting event this uh, evening, which also will host some student engagement pieces that we think is very important during this, particularly during this time. So that's that's what I'd like to say, and just to, that we're very very informal and very open group. So if you have any ideas, please do come our way. Thank you. And we need more members, <laughs> active members, especially <laughs> students. Yeah. Um, Five minutes. Okay, that was my first question for you. My second question for you is, could you, the panel behind you, could you flip, flip it around? Yes. Um, please. Um, so I think Bettina's always great at, at those like rallying moments, I find. Uh, so so I, let's, let's pick up on, on what you were just saying, Bettina, in terms of like, let's think 
uh, spend a few minutes if we can at our tables, thinking and talking about this, this impetus or this project this, of, of strengthening this idea of, of democratic education, education through democracy, education for democracy um, and in democracy. Um, the markers were not very helpful this morning, <laughs> but that's what we have. Um, uh, with new technologies and times we forget old technology. Uh, so th what, what that says there is um, there's three questions and one's a kind of a double barrel question next to a blue post-it note. On your table, you have blue sticky notes and yellow sticky notes. And let's just take three or four minutes at your table, if we can, chat with your neighbor, chat with, with your table and talk about the first one on the blue one what excites you about what you've just heard about this committee, the mandate, the activities? Um, what excites you and what would you like to see maybe? Like maybe there's something you'd like to see that you haven't heard. Maybe there's something you've heard that you just wanna make sure that you do see coming to fruition. So what excites, what excites you? What would you like to see is the blue um, piece of paper. You can talk to your neighbors and write that down. And the yellow one uh, is connected to like, if you want to contribute something, um, what would you what would you like to contribute so there's space there if you have a, a concrete suggestion if you just want to contribute like your time and your open mind and your energy that's that's also welcome um so on the yellow ones if you're contributing if you're putting something down just your name uh so we can follow up we can know who said what and uh in i'd say three or four minutes we'll get all of the stickies on the board and we'll wrap up um, I'll come to the question in a minute. There's a question, there's a hand up uh, online and online. Um, if you want to just use the chat to talk about what excites you, what you'd like to see more of. And um, if you want to contribute anything, you can just throw that in the chat. Um, there's a question in the room. No, it was just to draw attention to the question. Okay, and then Kathy, I see your hand. Did you have a question? What excites you? Hi, sorry, I can just uh, put it in the chat and discuss it with the group here online. Okay, great. Okay. It's too quiet now. <laughs> Maybe the easiest, uh, I, I feel like there's still some good energy at the table, so when it feels right uh, to conclude your discussions, and that could be uh, right now, if you're okay to just post your stickies on this board and we will collate that and, and process that um, as a committee. And, and if you have yellow ones where you would like to contribute something, then to just make sure that there's a way to follow up with you. And we've also included our emails if you want to um, reach out to us as well. Um, any other final concluding words? I'll just acknowledge that there's also some ideas on the chat that are interesting around expanding this to um, high school students. And uh, there's more that have come up since then. So um, also have a look at the screens if you're interested to see what's coming up online. And thank you for your time and uh, discussion. All right.